Miss America organization, as Denny said, focuses a lot on the education of the young women of this country. The Miss America organization makes available up to $45 million a year to educate the young women in this country from the local, state, and national level of this, of this organization. One young woman is chosen as Miss America each and every year. Our 92nd Miss America is no exception. Mallory Hagan, representing the state of New York, arrived on the Miss America stage. She charmed the judges. She tap danced her, her heart out. She was and is the essence of Miss America, and she's one of my eight adopted daughters. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mallory Hagan, Miss America 2013. <laughs> represented New York, but I just spent a few days back in Alabama where I grew up, as many of you may know, and so I feel like I can say, hey y'all, how y'all doing? Um, I am so thrilled to be here today. It was exactly by the date, eight months ago, when I did the very thing that you guys just did. And I think that they deserve a round of applause because it is the most nerve-wracking moment of the entire week, I'm pretty sure. up to the microphone in Las Vegas and feeling like I might die. Death. Might. I might also lose my speech. <laughs> so my point was that I commend these ladies because it is, is absolutely the most nerve-wracking moment. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Jenny, John, Mayor Langford, uh, Margaret, Liza, Ms. Sharon, she's gonna, you're going to hear from her in a minute. Thank you, Sam. Um, and people keep saying, welcome home, but I have kind of a funny story for you. Today, in my home at Boardwalk Hall, for at least two more weeks, um, I was standing there in a t-shirt and ball cap. If you know me, you know that would be my uniform, usually. And uh, I was standing there with, with my security guard, and we were waiting on a car. And a, a lovely woman walks in, and she says, hey, uh, is Miss America going to be here today at 1 o'clock? <laughs> and I looked at her and I was like, yeah, no, she'll be here at 4. She'll be here at 4. And she's like, oh, she'll, she'll, be here. she'll be out here on the boardwalk. And I was like, she will be out there on the boardwalk. She will. And she's like, what are they doing? And I was like, well, I think they're having an arrival ceremony and they're going to have a clam bake and perhaps some cupcakes and things. And she was like, okay, I can't wait. I'm going to be back at 4 o'clock. <laughs> so it's good to be home. <laughs> Um, I just, I've, I've had such an incredible journey this year or this past eight months as Miss America. I couldn't have asked for a better experience, better people to share it with. I uh, couldn't have asked for a more memorable moment than coming back to Atlantic City and being the Miss America who gets to walk that runway um, and say my goodbyes here. Uh, what an incredible opportunity and I, I cannot wait for next Sunday to see who, who will follow in my footsteps. Uh, in their pink and pepper shoes. Um, but the Miss America organization is about so much more than what we're doing here this week. We all know that it's a scholarship organization, but this year we have really aligned ourselves uh, more strategically with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, as to try and promote education and, and, uh, and STEM-related career fields for young women across the country. And I think that we've been incredibly successful. We've uh, founded the Miss America Foundation which we announced in D.C. not too long ago. And I've had the opportunity to meet with senators and congressmen and um, just really make an impact, I feel like. But I know that this next year we'll continue that. And the exciting part about that and what we did in, in D.C. was to announce the first annual STEM scholarship to uh, a young or two young women, actually, who, who are uh, pursuing STEM-related career fields. So today, the Miss America organization, for the first time, announces the STEM scholarship to the Miss America Foundation. These scholarships will allow women to pursue numerous careers in the sciences and mathematics field that continue to grow exponentially as we enter into a new age of technology and medicine. As the Miss America Foundation advocates STEM education through the arrival of a new scholarship, the lives of women who wish to pursue careers in STEM subjects will significantly change as they engage in dynamic careers where women can thrive and grow as humans, learners, 
and teachers for future generations to come. And I think that that's a huge step in the right direction for the Miss America organization. So we will have two recipients of the STEM scholarship, um, and they will each receive $5,000. And so today, I'm actually, yes. And so today, I'm actually gonna announce the five semi-finalists. So ladies, if your name is called, would you please come stand uh, down front? I'd like to recognize you and then take a picture or two before you head back, okay? The first nominee, it will be Miss California, Crystal Lee. Her career ambition is to start her own technology company. Congratulations. The second would be Miss Mississippi, Chelsea Rick. Chelsea's career ambition is to become a neurologist. Then we have Miss Nevada, Diana Sweeney. Diana's career ambition is to become a math professor. And then we have Miss Rhode Island, Jessica Marfea. Her career ambition is to become the director of the Island Department of Health. And last but not least, Miss South Dakota, Tessa Dean. Tessa's career ambition is to obtain a master's degree in my piece of paper says K, it was cut off. So what would you? Kinesiology. Kinesiology. perfect. Congratulations, ladies. Thank you, Mallory. You are the best, and I love you. Obviously, community service is another one of the elements that distinguishes Miss America from all those who try to emulate her. And we have a Quality of Life Community Service Award that is given every year to three young women. And today, to talk to you about the quality of life and the importance of community service to the Miss America organization, is my friend, my dear friend, and my partner, the president of the Miss America organization, and an incredible human being, Sharon Pierce. Before I begin, I just have to say, it feels great to be home. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the warm, wonderful welcome that you have given to our organization. There's no place like being home. So on behalf of the organization, I do want to thank the Lieutenant Governor, Denny, our Mayor, and our Atlantic City partners for making this such an incredible homecoming. The class of 2014 is privileged, and I'm proud to be a part of it with them. Today, um, we have the opportunity to recognize those contestants who have excelled in community service. Community service, as Sam has said, is the one thing that differentiates our organization and our pageant from any others. Those contestants who have excelled in their service to our national partner, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, as well as their own personal platforms. So I want to take a moment and introduce to you our seven finalists for the quality of life. The quality of life is also funded um, by our beloved Miss America who passed a couple of years ago, Miss America 1943, Jean Bartel. Today, um, thank you. Today, I'm proud to say uh, bullying, prevention, recovery. Miss Arkansas is our first finalist. Heart Healthy, Heart Safety, Carly Mathis, Miss Georgia. Through a child's eyes, conquering childhood grief. Haley Williams, Miss Michigan. Full Plates, Healthy States. Chelsea Rick, Miss Mississippi. Readers to Leaders, Jonna Edwards, Miss North Carolina. 
Be Friends First, Jessica Marfield, Miss Rhode Island. And College Application Day, Brooke Motzteller, Miss South Carolina. Congratulations to all of our Quality of Life finalists. Thank you ladies and congratulations.